The objective of this video series is to show how to create a routed network using the following topology. We have an internet provider connected to the Edge Router R1, which provides internet access to Router R2 and also Router R3, as shown in this diagram. Each of the three routers R1, R2, and R3 has its own LAN network. The main purpose of this lab is to provide internet access to all three LAN networks. It's a pleasure for me to be back on the channel. We're going to continue creating new micro tick content, all based on version 7 of Router OS. The advantages of implementing a routed network instead of a nated network or a network with NAT are as follows. Number 1. It facilitates the identification of client traffic from the edge router R1. Number 2. It avoids the process of network address translation or what we call NAT, which reduces latency on the network. That is to say, we can have a much faster network if we avoid applying NAT, the masquerade specifically. Number 3. It enables transparent communication from R1 to the LAN networks of all the routers on the network. This means that we can have access to our OLTs, to the radios, to the ONUs that we install in the client's homes, to the client's routers, to the radio links, to point-to-point -point or point-to-multipoint, and it will be very good for us that we can manage this for operation and maintenance purposes. In short, this routed network approach offers greater visibility, efficiency, and control compared to a nated network, or a network that has NAT, thereby improving the quality of the network and the user experience. To carry out this lab in which we're going to learn how to configure router R1, I've used a computer with Windows 11 operating system, on which I've installed the free programs VMware Workstation and GNS3. These programs allow me to virtualize an internet connection, three MicroTik routers, and three virtual machines with the Ubuntu operating system. This way, we can simulate a network with different subnets, and we'll configure the routers to communicate with each other. Next, I'll explain the steps I've followed to carry out this lab. In the video description, I'll leave the link to GNS3 and VMware Workstation. In this diagram, we can see the devices that are part of our network, the links that connect them, and the interfaces they use. To configure router R1, we're going to follow these steps. Step number one, assign a name to the router and its interfaces according to their connections. To do this, we're going to use the Winbox program, which allows us to access the router graphically. We select the MAC address of the router, and we click on Connect. We create a new password, for example 1234. To assign a name to the router we go to System Identity and we write R1. Now we're going to assign a name to each interface of the router. Because the screen is very small, we're going to zoom in to see better. Okay, it's much better now. Now we start with the Ether1 interface, which we'll call Ether11. Then we continue with the other interfaces, Ether2 to R2, the interface Ether3 to R3, and Ether5 to PC1. We continue with step number two. Configure the Ether11 interface with DHCP client. We do this to be able to receive internet dynamically. And we're also going to try pinging google.com. <music> to 
To do this, we go to IP DHCP client. And in the interface option, we select Ether1, which is the port through which we receive internet. The option add default root should be set to yes. We observe that our port has received an IP address 10.0.0.37 from the internet provider. If we go to IP root, we find a route that was created dynamically to have access to the internet through the gateway 10.0.0.1. Very good. We're going to close these windows and try pinging google.com. We see that we have a response. That is to say, R1 is already connected to the internet. Very good. We're going to close this window and continue. Step 3. Assign the IP addresses to the interfaces of R1 according to the diagram. We observe that R1 has four interfaces. Ether1, which connects to the internet. We also have Ether2 to R2, which connects to router R2. We also have Ether3 to R3, which connects to router R3. And finally, Ether5 to PC1, which connects to the computer PC1. Each of these interfaces has an IP address and a subnet mask assigned. To facilitate the process, we're going to make a table or a graphic with the IP addresses of R1 that we're going to configure next. In Winbox, we go to IP addresses and we see that the Ether1 interface already has the IP address 10.0.0.37/24, which it received dynamically when we configured the DHCP client in step 2. So, we're going to continue assigning the IP addresses to the rest of the interfaces. We click on the plus sign. In the interface option, we select Ether2 to R2, and in the address option, we write the IP address and the subnet mask of the Ether2 to R2 interface, which is 172.168.1/30, and we click on OK. We repeat the same process for the other interfaces, using the IP addresses and the subnet masks that we have in the table. We close here and we go to step 4. Create the general NAT so that all the output interfaces of R1 have access to the internet. To do this, firewall IP NAT and we click on the plus sign to add a new rule. In the chain option, we select SRK NAT. Then, in the out interface option, we select Ether1, which is the port through which the traffic goes out to the internet. In the Action option, we select Masquerade. Then we click on Apply and OK, and we close this window and we continue with Step 5. Create a DHCP server so that PC1 receives internet automatically, and test the navigation. To do this, we go to IP DHCP Server, and we click on DHCP Setup. We select the Ether5 PC1 interface, which is the interface that connects the router precisely with PC number 1, and we click on Next several times until we complete the assistant. This way, the router will assign an IP address, a subnet mask, and also a gateway and a DNS server to PC1 dynamically. 
We click on OK. Now when PC1 receives the IP address, this IP address will appear in the Leases tab. And at the moment, this isn't happening. So we go to PC1. We're going to check. We right-click and select Console. We enter the Ubuntu operating system with the user Ozboxes.org, which is shown on the screen. And we wait for it to start correctly. We open a terminal and try pinging the Google DNS with the command ping 8.8.8.8, .8 and we don't have a response. It may be that the network card is disconnected. We're going to fix this. We click on the network icon and we select connect. Now we should have a response and be able to browse the internet. To check this we open the browser Firefox and we enter in the address bar the Microtik website www.microtik.com and we see that everything has worked well. We should have something like this we have navigation and this lab has been a complete success. I hope that you liked this video and that you learned something new. I'll see you in the next video where we'll work on the configuration of router R2. Remember, if you have any questions or any suggestions you can leave them in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. Until next time.